Thank you. Um, uh, before we start uh, our session, uh, I, I request uh, Dr. Suresh Nair because this time uh, more than 50 percentage of our participants joined to our app. So, sir, please explain a little bit about that, then uh, we'll proceed. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Susan. Good evening, everyone. Uh, we are very happy to involve you all that we have introduced CEIR Global App for the better administration of our programs. And it's very easy for you also to operate it. Many of you must have already downloaded the app and watching this program through the app. We have already got some feedback from the, uh, the, the teachers and the principals who have joined through the app. But for the benefit of those who have not downloaded the app, I would like to explain how you can join our Saturday webinars, not only Saturday webinars, any of the programs using the app. It's very simple. First of all, install CEIR Global App from Play Store. And exactly like any other app, register your name using your mobile number or email ID. Once you register, you will get an OTP. Please enter the OTP for verification. Once we verify, click on batches at the bottom of the screen. In the bottom on the bottom on the screen on bottom side, you will find out a, a tab called batches. There, there will be a plus button. So just click on plus button and enter the batch code. Now, batch codes will be different for different programs. And for Saturday programs, it will be S-A-T-W-E-B-N-R, Saturday webinar, S-A-T-W-E-B-N-R. And if it is for any other session, there will be a different uh, code, batch code, it will be given to you, and it will be seen in the screen. You will be able to do it. Once you uh, enter that uh, batch codes, S-A-T-W-E-B-N-R, you can see Saturday webinar over there and you can uh, just uh, uh, click on Saturday webinar and on Saturday you will be able to join. Now you can just download it right now, but since today being Saturday, you will be able to join. But if it is done on any other day, you will not be able to join because the program is not on Saturday. So on Saturday, you can just join it. And I hope you have followed me. It's very, very simple. In case if anybody finds it, uh, finds any type of problem, then uh, uh, you just join it, download it, join it, and we will uh, tell you how to do it automatically. I would like to announce that there will be a free session. Those who have joined through this app, then there will be a free session on be a professional handwriting trainer and earn regular income on Monday, 26th April at 4 p.m. That is this day after tomorrow at 4 p.m. So I request all of you to uh, download the app and join. And I think uh, just for a uh, 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 feedback, I request uh, Purna, Purna Madam to just uh, give a uh, feedback about this app. Just one second, ma'am. She Purna is in the app today. <laughs> Purna ma'am, is she there? Purna ma'am? Otherwise? Uh, no problem, sir. Then uh, uh, okay, okay, sir, you proceed. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, then so, I'll put the thing, sir. Uh, uh, please make Pradesha ma'am co-host. Okay. Uh, the same uh, same thing. You can also watch uh, the previous videos uh, in the same application itself. Okay. Thank you. I request uh, uh, Mrs. Geeta Raj, ma'am, the principal, to continue. Just introduce her, sir. Susan, sir, just introduce her. Yeah, Geeta, ma'am. Geeta, ma'am, please. Uh, Geeta, ma'am, is our uh, sonal director, Coimbatore, and she is the principal of Kekani Vidya Mandir, Coimbatore. I request, yes. uh, ma'am, uh, to introduce our chief guest and welcome the gathering. Ma'am, please. Good evening, Geeta, all. Good evening, ma'am. Life is about perception. Perception is based on opinion. 
and opinion is based on some network issue i sound believe sound is sound is not heard ma'am i think she is having um, Can you hear me now, sir? Ah, yes, yes. Ma'am, it's okay. Ma'am, you can you can uh, try. Sound is open. Hello. Ah, yes, ma'am, you can try. No problem. I'm sorry. There is some network network issues. Sir. Uh, 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 Ma'am, uh, I think uh, Suresh sir, you can proceed there. Uh, Suresh sir, you can oh, proceed. Yes, yeah. Uh, welcome to all of you. First of all, I welcome the chief guest, Dr. Tushar Guha, a psychologist, educationist, performing artist, and a corporate trainer. I welcome all the members of the board of directors. Zonal directors of CEIR, premium members, principals, and teachers. First of all, I would like to give you a brief about CEIR. What is CEIR? Center of Educational Initiatives and Research. CEIR is a forum of experts and scholars who aim at nourishing the talents of educators to raise the education sector in India to global standards. CEIR, as an efficient board of directors, zonal directors. and the premium members all across india and the middle east we have been doing many activities uh, since 2009 since 2009 cir has conducted about 11 principals conclaves 15 interactive sessions with cbse officials 58 saturday webinars 26 handwriting made made easy workshops and seven career counseling sessions so far national we have conducted a national level nup quiz in the month of december where in around uh, 3095 people have participated and uh, in the month of february we have done nep a master class webinar series then right now nep pedagogy series is going on the last series will be the next friday on the next friday all cer activities are going to be held through cir global app which has been already explained to you how to join also veda handwriting lab is one of the more it gives handwriting which is one of the most essential skills which affects students self esteem confidence levels and even marks with online classes teachers are not able to take care of students handwriting as in normal classrooms cir Veda Handwriting Lab has come up with a practical solution, a well-crafted training kit with a personalized student application to help them acquire neat and legible handwriting. Schools are welcome to try it through a virtual free Campus Connect program. You may visit handwritingkit.com uh, Campus Connect for more details. And all the CAR activities are supported by Veda Handwriting Lab. we have certain upcoming project that is uh, <clears throat> cear is coming up with the mark of excellence award 2021 to honor outstanding schools of india and abroad for more details please visit cerglobal.com website inform the uh, in, all the participants are here by informing that in case if you have any questions to be asked please type the same in the chat box it will be taken in due course of time i'll be introducing dr tushar guha little later because even because you know that when i have just uh, taken uh, she was not able to talk uh, due to some network problem so sir i uh, i request uh, dr tushar guha to uh, start the session sir i i were either either after finishing the session or in between i would be introducing you sir i'm sorry sir please admit yes sir okay uh, thank you 
and Dr. Suresh. Do you have sir. anything to, sir? Uh, sorry to uh, disturb you, sir. Do you have any, any anything to share, sir? Any screen sharing is there? Uh, okay, Dr. Gopinath. Uh, uh, okay, I'll, uh, I'll this is Gilish Dalvi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You I, can I, share it, sir. You can share it. I will do that. Yes, yes, yes. yes please. And if you want, Suresh, sir, I can introduce Dr. Guha also. Please, to the sir. Okay, please, please, please. So that please, sir, you know, please, we know whom we are hearing. So listening to Yeah, very good. Other. Very good. Sir, so thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, it's a pleasure to introduce our mentor and uh, the trustee and chairperson of Nrityanjali as well as Open for our principles, Dr. Tushar Guha, to the esteemed audience. Uh, while I was looking at the participants, I could make out that there were many who are already familiar with us and some of them know. Uh, Nrityanjali, uh, founded by Dr. Tushar Goa, is an institution of performing arts, education, personality development, and management services. And this institution was initiated by Dr. Guha himself at the age of 15. So that reflects his leadership skills. He is known to be an educationist. He is known to be a performing artist. He is known to be a psychologist. Today, he is also a corporate trainer, consultant to numerous corporate houses and also mentored to the leadership levels in various PSUs across uh, India. Uh, Dr. Gua's work has traveled abroad. In fact, his doctorate uh, that he has achieved in the field of personality development and psychology has been bestowed upon him by the University of Contemporary Studies USA. Uh, he got this doctorate simply because of his selfless work in the field of education and his research that was published by government of Maharashtra in 1993. So that gave him the honor to have the doctorate from the university. And over 10 students have currently done doctorate under him through the university. Uh, Dr. Guha, as I said earlier, is also the founder chairman of Open Forum for Principles, where he again, like CEIR, in 2007 initiated a movement where all like-minded educationists from across India, as well as abroad, can come together and work together for the fulfillment and the need that the education sector has. Like Dr. Uh, Nair said, yes, we need to cater to the global perspective and give our students the entire approach and the vision that is required in today's time. His work has been carried out by many principals here present and otherwise across India as well as abroad. He has been traveling to Canada, to USA, to Switzerland, to Germany, London, and South Australia. In fact, his paper was also presented at the Harvard University, where he spoke about how conflict resolution can be a reason for us to get peace across the globe. Dr. Goa is also a postgraduate examiner in the University of Mumbai, and also examiner, external examiner for the University of Contemporary Studies. Uh, he works with various corporate sectors to conduct behavioral training programs and has written a number of books that have been under his publication, over 10 books, right from books for the corporate sector to the education sector. And he is known across for the effective parenting session that Chaptua conducts every year. Uh, he has covered over 2 lakh teachers through the DPEP program, that is District Primary Education Program, and continues to do so through the Sarva Shikshan Abhiyan. And his main area has been Northeast as well as the North of India, where he has been extensively traveling. And even in COVID, he has been taking sessions online through Zoom, through various other channels. Uh, Dr. Guha has been ably supported by a huge number of faculty members who are also counselors, giving training for career counseling, teacher training program, assessment programs, teacher appraisal programs, and life skills program for students. And he his work has been recognized by the Film and Television Institute of Pune uh, alumni, as well as Churchilla Productions. And they have come up with a 90 minutes documentary titled Nirjhar, which was premiered by National Center of Performing Arts in the month of, in January in 2019. So that's Dr. Gaur for us. He's an artist, he's a speaker, he is a mesmerizer, and that is exactly what we are going to witness today through this session. Thank you, Thank Mr. Girish Delvi. So I welcome Dr. Tushar Guha. Sir, the stage is yours.
Dr. Guha? Yeah, yeah. He, he is getting it ready, sir. One second. Okay. okay. No, okay, no. Okay, okay. What had happened is from my screen, everything uh -huh. had moved out. And uh, <laughs> I am I'm very honest. I am not absolutely savvy with all this. I need help. So I got the help anyway. <laughs> thank you, Girisha. Thank you, uh, CIER for... Uh, C for inviting me here. Uh, greetings to all of you and Namaskar. Uh, the subject, program and reality, has a large connotation. And to simplify, reality is the truth. And projection is how do we project the truth. And I believe we cannot fool all the people all the time. If the, whatever is the truth, even if you try to camouflage that, sometime or the other, it gets across. Okay, and uh, when we talk about projection, it's a lot like when in the accounts, like uh, recently I was addressing the tax consultants of India. Uh, uh, so in finance, we say the balance sheet and the profit and loss is projection. We, in every corporate, we have a projection of a marketing team. Uh, in the films and creative world, we have visualization that is again, goes into projection. So projection is at every way of life. And when you talk about diplomacy, which I will be talking a little later, a lot of people uh, feel that diplomacy is a bunch of lies, but it is actually a projection. So, and me, uh, more than 50 years in professional life, in corporate and educational life, I uh, have a, a slight different kind of approach in life. I believe uh, when I talk about Profession. We are all educators here, so that's our profession. A number of us, majority of us, are rather educators because out of passion, not because uh, uh, of uh, you know commercial aspects. That is what I have experienced all my life. Most of the teachers are very passionate, and uh, when we have that genuineness, that automatically gets portrayed. With the and today's condition across the globe, the pandemic is very frightful. And here, projection reality becomes extremely important. Uh, I remember when uh, Dr. Nair Suresh sir actually was speaking to me, I only chose this uh, topic. I said it's so relevant today because the reality is. All of us are panic stricken. We are frightened. And that is the truth. But yet, somehow, all of us hopes. Because even uh, yesterday, I was addressing the medical fraternity. And I have told, I said, what normally happens if you see any patient, 50% of the patient becomes all right. The moment the patient meets the doctor and doctor has that positive approach, and then we start feeling happy. So what is it actually bottom line? It's the hope. Because if there is no hope, we cannot go ahead. That means if there is no positivity. And in pandemic, what has happened? What is the human race frightened about? Frightened about the unknown. And pandemic, everywhere, if you go to see the newspaper or the news channel, or any person we talk, everybody's talking how, how terrible it is. Now, uh, during this last one year, I have addressed innumerable motivational addresses to uh, the medical fraternity, you know, frontline, back office, nurses, doctors. I've also addressed the workers and non-management people of the corporate of the essential services to motivate them to come forward to work. Now, with all this that was happening, the uh, each sector did their own work. The economic sector looked after the economics. Then uh, the health sector looked after the health. But we educators, we did a very, very great job. That is because we created the spirit for living. Education was spirit for living. And if we see, all the teachers got groomed onto online training and gradually now has become expert on that. Now, that happened because there is a hope. And in other words, we all 
projected that hope to millions of people. Yet, the reality remained there that somehow there was an unknown fear, but we started believing in ourselves. So, what I want to do is go back from profession to our life because we are not our definition or explanation of our living is not only our profession. I believe every coin has two sides. So we have one side is professional, the other side is social and personal. But the profession comes later. But before profession comes what? Before profession comes human relations, our neighbors, our family. But before that comes me, the self. And I believe this self needs to have confidence. The, this felt self needs to have assurances within self that yes, I live. I always believe there are uh, three things in life, existing, living, and reality living. Now, majority of us, generally, as a, a human relation researcher, I find majority of us exist. We do our routine job. We don't live. And I often give an explanation, you know, like in any metropolis, if you go to, in the busy hours, if you go to the platform in a uh, railway platform, when you get down, we cannot keep standing. We have to keep moving because we are getting pushed. And only that we do is we turn right or left so that we are able to reach our destination. That I call is existing. Living is something that I do with the joy. And then comes reality living where I also do for others. So I believe that truth has to be living, not existing. And for this, each one of us have to go back to our own selves. In the management circle, we always say, if a person is not happy at home, one cannot be passionate in the profession. So we need... And when I say happy at home means, I mean within myself. Happiness, we always say happiness is a state of mind. If I want to be happy, I am happy. If I do not want to be happy, nobody can make me happy. So essentially, I will begin from there. I always say this is projection and reality is the universal truth. Uh, okay, so can I have the next slide, please? It, it is called so I always look at it. See, I'm going backwards. Profession, relation, family, and self. This is in any world, in every sphere of life. Now, whether we are doctors, whether I'm an MBA, I'm an engineer, I'm a teacher, anywhere, these things are important. Often we feel that uh, my profession will start giving a lot of importance. You know, in the corporate and uh, even in the medical field, now there is a huge program I think even in the education, it has started coming work-life balance because we are un unable to balance this too. Either we give too much of importance to profession. Profession is, yes, is a source of income. Money is important. Without vitamin M, we cannot survive. But that is not the only thing. I started saying that majority of we teachers are passionate. If in profession, passion isn't there, one cannot be successful. I often say, what is the difference between ordinary and extraordinary person? Is that little extra. One who has the passion goes that extra step. And therefore, it has to happen from self. So I go to a definition of self. And I believe in my research, there are three S's in self. Self-confidence, sustenance of rationality, and self-reliance. Every one of us have always heard that we need to have self-confidence. But seldom we have ever been told how to have self-confidence. Now, I have the honor that the Maharashtra government, um, based off my, on my research work, has introduced personality development as a compulsory subject in all state boards, uh, schools. And CBSC, ICSC, we have had life skill since 1994. In the research where with the students, we have also started sharing this because the self-confidence 
and there is a difference between self confidence and but how do i have self confidence that needs to be shared basically majority of the people are body shy when i say body shy i do, do not mean that we need to be shameless and we have to be vulgar but when i say body shy i means at least in the 80s and up to 2000 to the year 2000 in india we would find it very shocking if we have told anybody have a look at your body have a look at your physique of course now since it is all over the net so people have started getting accustomed to it but it is very important that 50 percent of our self-confidence comes from our body you know body reacts to clothes you will notice that the moment we are formally dressed with a suit we will sit in a particular manner we will walk in a particular manner we will stand in a particular manner where the lungi or the munda or a pajama you will notice we will sit in a different manner we will walk also very casually so body reacts to clothes so appreciation of the body has two things of course hygiene and health but more than that psychologically it gives me a uh, very good feeling that is why i say if i'm not beautiful in my own eyes how can i be beautiful in the eyes of others and where am i or anybody else sit on a judgment of a fellow human being now this beauty is not physical alone because that is here i have introduced signs of mirror that i need to look at myself in the mirror i need to appreciate self it begins from self i need to appreciate myself a lot of people say that how can you, how should you, why should you love yourself? Because the moment you love yourself, you are selfish. I beg to differ. I believe if I cannot love myself, I cannot love anybody else. But yes, when I say I, there cannot be a full stop after that. Then it becomes selfish. From I, it should become dot, dot, dot and become we. From I to we, this is the journey of knowing self. And when I say self-confidence one is body one is to identify my own strengths and weaknesses most of us think that i have to get my strength and weaknesses as per the perception of others i believe not at all because human relationship is all about need base everybody needs everybody else and accordingly we start perceiving people and therefore it is in my own eyes i have to identify my pluses and my minuses and i have to grow on my pluses and while rectifying my minuses however insignificant may be my pluses it could be that i'm good in some game so how do we define what is the quality quality is anything that i do that gives me joy but does not harm anybody else that's my passion and that is what we need to grow about you know, number of have become teachers because we have seen people teaching and we are impressed or I love teaching or I love reading or it could be I love sharing or it could be I love talking or I love being with youngsters. So there could be multiple reasons. But any one of those, if I pursued, it has triggered into me to grow in my uh, pluses. It could be as simple as I have known people who love to talk. They can definitely make an approach to become a public speaker or an orator. So any quality that I have, I need to pursue, however insignificant it may be in the eyes of others. Because when I pursue, like you have heard I'm a performing artist. I'm a renowned Kathak dancer and a folk dancer. I started it from the age of two and a half. And I continue to do so. And that led me to research through dance physiology. And that led me to research through dance on health. And today I've come out with the computer syndrome exercises, which is shown by CNBC channel all the time. Because, and specifically this time of pandemic, everybody's getting affected by using constantly computers or laptops or the mobile. It is having its own reaction with the eyes or with the body. But this consumer uh, computer syndrome exercises 
help us to get out of it. And we are under so much of demand that we need to show that to people. And I often say that you can, of course, always go to the Google and see all the exercises are shown. And if that is done, the, you can accrue the benefits. Having said this, the next step on the self-confidence comes is that I need never to compare myself with others. Unfortunately, in the world, right from childhood, we have always been compared with other people. But it should never be because in psychology, we believe no two people are alike and can ever be alike. We are different. And I also believe, therefore, no person is superior or inferior to others. We happen to be senior or junior by virtue of being born early or later. So I need to compare myself at all, if at all, with me, what I was, what I am, and what I'm going to be. And accordingly, I need to grow. The second S, I talk about sustenance of rationality. This reasoning power is a very, very important thing in human life. You know, um, we are all educators. We know in third standard, the first thing that is taught to a child is human beings are rational animals. It's later we are taught human beings are also social animals. After that, we are taught human beings are also emotional animals. But the tragedy is when I ask any adult, fill in the blank, human beings are dash animals. They all say social, irrespective of whether they're doctors, engineers, even teachers. We forget the first we are rational. That distinguishes us differentiates us from any other animal. Other animals cannot think, only human beings can think. But unfortunately, we give that as the last preference. That's why I have used the word sustenance, because it is there within me. All that I have to do is polish it. Again, because we are in the same fraternity, we have a huge error in our education system. I'm not talking about India. I'm talking across the globe. We do not, of course, the trends are exchanging. We do not allow questions to be asked. Our teaching methodology is I told and you listen. Today we are talking about participatory learning. We are talking about experiential learning. But all this has evolved. So far it has always been the teacher said the student learned or the parents said the children learned. Children were never allowed to ask questions. And I always believe. Asking a question is my birthright. Yes, how to ask is a question is a different issue. I must know whom I'm asking a question. That brings me to transaction analysis of uh, communication, where the sender must understand the capacity of the receiver to receive and interact accordingly. So I must know whom am I asking a question. So accordingly, I will have to be asking a question. And we elders are obliged to answer. But often we snub. We say, shut up, because I told you, maybe we, are, we don't have time. In emergencies, it is okay. But otherwise, we need to offer explanation. And by offering explanations, we do not become small. Believe me, don't, I'm not bragging, but I practice this with my own uh, supporting staff also. Any question they can always ask me, and I always offer an explanation, even before they ask. For the simple reason is, why should I be little the intellectual development of those people. They have a right to know. And then I found when I give the reason before the work is done, they do it much more efficiently because they know why, what is the purpose of the work to be done. This sustenance has to be, that's why I use the word sustain that you have to pursue rationality. When we are not going to use rationality, then it, it gets rusted. Like a shoe has to be polished, diamond has to be polished, a rationality has to be polished. And therefore, there are methods. There are methods is one is calming the mind. That could be either done through meditation or yoga or being alone with self. Often we keep on saying we must do yoga, you must. Let's be practical. How many of us can? Specifically in a metropolis cities where the life is so fast. We don't get time. But we can definitely get time for ourselves for 15, 20 minutes to half an hour. So I always suggest to people, spend time with yourself. And this spending time with yourself starts coming. What happens at the initial stages when you start, a lot of thoughts come. But gradually, thoughts stop. So I'm blank. And that's as good as meditation. And when you come, what happens? I become reasonable. 
I become more objective. And I think I need to offer a reason to myself also as to why I do what I do. And therefore, I decide how I do what I do. And this starts giving us the calmness. And I also believe to create a comfort zone. That is why I often say that believe in our own traditions, believe in our customs. And because we get a lot of comfort zone from this, I always say, accept the contribution of material objects to your life. Because we feel comfortable. But often people say then we are becoming materialistic. I see all of us, the side of the bed we sleep, we are never wanting to change that with anybody. Why? Because we are comfortable there. And you know, it, it has got connection with uh, the feeling for the material. Like in our Indian society, we always uh, have Griha Pravesh. We have um, Bhumi Pujan. Even abroad, they have housewarming parties. So that means the house, they feel it is mine. So the sense of belonging to the house. This sense of belonging gives us a comfort zone all the time. And now there is a very important thing, which number of you must be reading it now on the net. It is called EFT, Emotional Freedom, Freedom Therapy. It is a must. And like all of us, we get burdened sometime or the other. There are issues that stresses us. Now, where do I go with my stress? And how many times can I go to people? Can the other person understand my st stress the way it has happened? It is not possible. Even a counselor does not because counselor listens to one side of the story, not the other side of the story. It's very important, therefore, to become self-sufficient. Get it out of your system. I'll tell you the EFT system is, it is not diary writing. It is anytime I'm stressed or something that is worrying me, I should take a sheet of paper, write down the issues that is worrying me. Even if that is anger, even if there is fear, even if there is sorrow, even if there's bullying, write down everything. And the moment after you finish writing, read it instantly. You will find 30 to 40% is concocted or my imagination or I thought so. Read it after one more hour and then destroy the paper. The paper need not should not be kept at all because human tendency is to refer that paper and then become sad all over again. So this is called, I call it psychological puking. You know, when we overeat, what did we do? We put our fingers and vomit. So this is also when I'm overfull, get it out of my system. It saves me because I don't have to go to anybody else. I'm not projected as a weak person. How many times would we like to go to some person? You can have discussions, but the same issue, if we keep on going on and on and on, people will avoid me after some time. So that is where, and what will happen is when I'm empty, my relatively, I'll be calmer. Again, once I have written down, when it is in black and white, I will address the issue. This is where it is. It is the problem. Okay. I come to the third S. The third S is self-reliance. I believe each one of us, of course, today our prime minister is going on insisting on Atmanir Bhartna, that is self-reliance. But self-reliance has to be of my thought, of my feelings. I often tell the corporate executives that there is a sentence I quote of my own is, let us be democratically autocratic. Now, democratically autocratic is, I listen to everybody and then come down to a conclusion, but that conclusion is mine. So I am objective there. And this particular aspect of it is very, very important. You know, uh, during my uh, research work, I actually researched for 32 years. Okay, the first five, six years, I was not aware that it was a research. Later on, I realized it was a research. And I went to north, south, east, west of India. I went to different states and stayed in the villages to study people. And it took me 30 years. After 32 years, I got my PhD. But when I researched and I learned a lot of things, one of the major things I learned is the definition of education. All of us, 
who are literate are not necessarily educated. And I know plenty of people who are not literate but are highly educated. Education is opening the horizon of the mind. Education is adaptability to change with globalization, but not forgetting my own values or not my own traditions. Today we think everything udhar ka thik hai, so I mold myself. No, I can still remain a proud Indian with all my values, with all my traditions, yet I can be accepted globally. It is always possible. And that is education. Yes, sanskar and ku sanskar, differentiation of both will have to be. I have learned this lesson from a so-called uneducated, but who was actually illiterate, eight-year-old lady when I was 25 years old. I'm not going to actually share the whole incident because it is going to take a lot of time. But I learned from her that what is education and what is literacy. And from a village I had learned. Because at the age of 25, I was doing my PhD, so I was you know, thinking no end of myself. And I was hailing from a very high-profile family. So, you know, a pity approach I had. There I crashed. I realized it is she who is educated. I might have done my master's. I might be doing my PhD, but I am only literate. I am not educated. Wisdom is with her. And it is during that time that I realized the self-reliance because this lady was at the age of 80. She was very, very self-reliant. She would do all her chores alone and lead her life independently. But when I say this independence, independence of thought and feeling, Actually, you know what it precedes? It precedes, first of all, physically. You will notice any person, first, we get physically uh, you know, weak, and then mental weakness comes afterwards. So it's very important uh, to be physically active. That is why women across the world are far more agile than the men. Because whatever it is, we men have been groomed in not doing much of household chores. Today, things are changing, but most of us don't. I do, but, but most of the people don't like to do anything. You will find a woman, a lady of the house, even when she's 80 and 90, they're still agile because they do everything at home. Even when a lady is working, school or college or any corporate professional, when they come back home, it's they who cook, they who maintain home. So they're agile. We men don't. And what happens to us? Because physical agility goes out, gradually mental agility also goes out, and gradually we become senile. So Atmanirbhar has to come first with physically, let us be self-reliant. Like, for instance, men must stitch their own buttons, make their own bed, go to the kitchen to help, wash clothes, wash utensils, all. Even in your own cabin, you can clean a table. I do that. I, 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 Whatever I say, I practice everything. And then what happens is people start looking up to you and I start having a confidence. When I'm physically agile, automatically, mentally, I will be far more alert. Okay? I am a very old man now, but I find that my memory is as sharp as I was when I was 30. And I'm physically, even now I'm working 16 hours a day, physically, and I'm able to work. And with joy, primarily because I love what I do. And I have belief in myself. Yes, this much I will definitely say. With age, slight slowing down has happened. That is bound to happen. So therefore, self-reliance is a very important thing. Now I go to the next slide called family and relationships. I call it the cap, you know. And what is the cap? It is communication acceptance and presentation. When from self, when I start, it's with my family and relations. So I must be able to communicate. And communication is what I had referred to this transaction analysis. Must I must understand the capacity of the receiver to receive. With whomever I am talking, my tone must be such, my approach must be such. Today we have both you know, verbal and non-verbal, body language is more crucial, more important. So when we communicate, how do I communicate? That's very important. And with whom do I communicate? I often say, what to do? All of us know. 
but how to do makes all the difference. Then comes, as we grow, academics come in our life. So we have to add value to ourselves. The academics is not because of only degrees, because the enlightenment goes. You know, I think all of us know, till 12th standard, what is written in the textbook, that needs to be answered. Okay, but when we go for higher studies, what is written in the textbooks cannot be answered, then we don't get marks. Then my own contribution has to happen. That is what I call it is academics, that enlightenment, that I'm able to observe multiple things, able to internalize those learnings and then add them to my living. And then comes presentation. Presentation is again, Projection, presentation is how do I project? I hear there's a lady who came, Mira Vani Kharab hai. To ki anything she goes to say, the way she tells, people misconstrue. So therefore, we must know even the way to talk. Presentation is not only about the clothes and my style. Presentation is my whole approach to people. When we take up presentation skills, I always say it is PPT or brochures, they are not presentations. They're aids to a presentation. Presentation is by the person, the individual who is talking. Now I'm showing you PPT, but that is not my presentation. Presentation is me, the way I talk to you. And therefore, that presentation will come when? When I believe in myself. When will I believe in myself? When I will know the truth. When I will be confident within myself that what I'm talking, I believe in that, and that gets projected, and that is presentation. Then I now come to profession. When I come to profession, I call it the three T's. That is target and focus, time management, and team dynamics. Of course, there are the three more trees, which is called trust, transfer, and transform. But let me first talk about target and focus. Since I also train at IIT as well as all the MBA colleges, the concept of target and focus has changed from the time when I was young. When I was young, we had target and focus was also synonymous. Today, target is what is to be achieved and focus means how to achieve. Focus means I must know what is in front of me, what is behind me, what's on my right, what's on my left, what is on top, what's on bottom. That means I need to have tremendous observation skills. Observation skills happens through, I'll talk about this in the next slide, uh, how it happens. So we have to understand the difference between the target and the focus. And also at this point, an issue comes of generation. People call generation gap, but I say there's nothing called a generation gap. It is generation diversity. As we grow, we elders, when I say elders, I'm not talking about 70 plus, 80 plus. I'm saying from 25 to when I'm 30, 30 to when I'm 35, 35 to when I'm 40, 40 to when I'm 50, that as I'm growing and adding age, I must also understand the changes that are happening in every sphere of life, which I call is GMQ in the corporate language. GMQ is general market quotient. It is not dividend and share. Along with GMQ, you know, you, I do not know if you know, Suresh so sir, you will remember that in OFP, I had made a paper presentation of competitive intelligence. So it's a very important thing to know what is happening across the globe. I just like to share because we are the same fraternity and uh, just before the pandemic in 2019 when open forum for our principles of which I'm the chairperson, we had our annual meet. You know what I had done? I had spoken on something called equal education. There is, you know, Cambridge board, there is ICSC, there is CBSC and there's state board. But education is education. Why everything cannot be shared? And I made a platform where IC, ICSC people or CBSC people or SSC people and um, Cambridge board, everybody shared. And you know what we found? That even state boards, there are schools who are having horse riding and are having swimming. 
But we thought it is the prerogative of Cambridge board and ICSC board. The myth was broken. It is the desire, the passion, and the vision plus the financial ability. So equal education is a must. And we can all learn, and that is what I had shared that time, and I was so grateful to each principal coming and sharing the things that what ICS is doing, even a state board can do, subject to certain conditions. It may not be in totality, but partially it can always be done. And there are, and it is happening. Now, I come down to time management. All of us know time management is a mental discipline. Why am I talking under profession, the time management, and specifically today as an educationist? Because, you know, I think we all know this, that um, whatever we say must reflect in me. You know, I have to practice, practice what you preach. But then if discipline is not seen in me, how can I be an effective teacher? It is not the subject that is being taught. It is the overall that has been taught. Is the teacher right on time in the class? Or she late or she's early? She goes early. Now, her own discipline is going to be inculcated into discipline. Uh, in our time, I'm talking because I'm old. I used to see my teachers, apart from the subject, everything else also used to emanate in their behavior. Unfortunately, today that is not there. So this a holistic learning does not happen. We, what was the need of having a life skill program nowadays? When I was small, we did not have life skills program, yet we learned. Because as a teacher, the teaching fraternity must have a second thought. We must realize, we must think, do I project everything that a human being is supposed to be? The basic qualities of time management and team dynamics is it getting projected. Now, if that does not get projected, then the learning goes wrong. Now, I have been observing even in online, number of teachers are not coming on in class. Students are already there, teachers don't. So it's reflecting. So time management is a mental discipline. And I believe it is more of a common sense strategy. I have to regulate my life, regulate my activity. When I'm doing it, I have to take out my uh, travel time, my family time, my professional time. I have to bifurcate each, bracket each, and therefore act accordingly. And that is simple as time management because time management gets reflected into a human being. And therefore, such persons are accepted. Then it comes to team dynamics. There's a little, I, the reason I have taken team dynamics is there's a little difference between team building and team dynamics. I teach team dynamics a lot in USA because team building is logistics and infrastructure. And team in team building comes within the available resources. Today, even a school has an HRD department. So they choose the people and they give it to the respective departments. But the team dynamics is how, how the team is going to work. It is the spirit of the team. For this, I believe there are three sentences that individual growth is necessary, but individual growth is not the end. Collective individual growth is a must. So I can have people with me. We have all heard the story. There used to be six sons who fight all the time. And the parents, the father always explained, but finally told each one of them to get a stick and break the stick. Each one broke the stick. Then the father said, get again another lot of six. Then all the six sticks he tried and he said, break it. But I go a little further. What if the first stick that I had brought was very solid and hard? It would be impossible to break that. And when such strong sticks are tied together, the strength is much larger. So therefore, individual, that is why self is important. Individually, I must be powerful. And when such powerful things come, and when I'm saying powerful is not physical, I'm calling about powerful, am I reasonable? Do I have logic? Do I have accountability? Do I have adaptability? 
And when all of us have that, what is going to happen is the whole team is going to be open to ideas and open to molding as per the requirement that is required. Therefore, there's another sentence which I say is initiate the initiative of the fellow team members. I believe every person has initiative, but some of us may not be able to show our initiative and there are reasons. It could be, you know, in psychology we have um, environment or theory, uh, this is hereditary theories. Because of such circumstances, one may be quiet. I have had people who wouldn't talk much. Then I realized because they were not allowed to talk much. But what happens, and I encourage them to come out and talk. Today, when they talk, what happens is we get valuable suggestions. Others would have been deprived of such a such suggestion. That is why it is not the job of the leader, but the fellow team members. Everybody needs to motivate everybody. Everybody needs to encourage and appreciate self as well as others, including our bosses. Because the bosses also are human beings. They also love to be appreciated. This brings me to this trust, transfer, and transform. You know, uh, across the globe, for the last 10 years, a major uh, training is going on in corporate that is called mentoring. And in number of universities, even in Mumbai universities, uh, under the education management department, I have been taking mentoring uh, training for uh, the students as well as the professors. Recently, I was taking at RCF Rashtriya Chemical Fertilizers Limited. I was taking mentoring with them. I said, what is mentoring? And that is what is so important now in pandemic. That do I trust myself? Am I able to trust the other person? And am I able to transfer my knowledge and my spirit of living? Because that gradually will transform. Nothing happens overnight. It takes time. But initiative has to be taken. We have to start leading our life. I come to the last slide of mine, which I call it is the key requirements that are required. Okay. So in the key requirements, I have capacity and limitations. Each one of us will have to know what is my capacity, but also my limitations. Most of us, we lose out on the limitation part of it. I can delegate whoever is good at it. There's nothing to feel shy. We cannot know everything. It is not possible. There are too many. Just now I told you, there's something went wrong. I do not know. Immediately I told my IT. They were standby. They have to, I have to take their help. What is there to feel shy about it? I don't know. I'm trying to learn. It may take longer or in this life I may not learn. It doesn't matter. But I have to have the backup plan all the time. Then I was talking to you about observation skills. Observation happens to a number of ways. Reading is one of them. Seeing is another. Hearing is another. And even writing is another. So all these methods will have to be internalized. We need to have humor because we need to look at life, which gives us hope. The lighter side of life, specifically in pand pandemic, what has happened is we are, as I told you, I started, we are fear of the unknown and we are paranoid. You know, I have taken too many parenting workshops during this pandemic across the globe, in India as well as across the globe, all online, of course. I actually give timetable to parents, right from KG children to 12th standard, how they should spend the 24 hours, where I even gave, you know, time for procrastination. A child will have that, you know. Procrastination. You have to provide time. Time for fighting. And people were laughing. But they may sound humorous. But they're very significant to do that. Light heartedly. And I have told you in the beginning, I will talk about diplomacy. Diplomacy is not lies. Today we find our foreign minister is traveling and going on constantly having interaction with his counterparts of Russia, China, US, UK, Pakistan. What is diplomacy? Is able to share our thoughts 
in a palatable manner, which it becomes easy. So when projection, the primary basic line of projection is diplomacy. How do I tell the truth in a manner which is digestible by the other person? We can call a spade a spade, but we can also call a spade in an indirect manner. So where the scope for continuity and not the end, that is projection. That we do not, let, let multiple thoughts come in. You know, um, I, I, don't, I believe in God a lot. I don't do a lot of puja part, rituals I don't. And uh, I remember this statements of uh, Ramakrishna Paramhans, Vivekananda's guru. He had said, as many people, there are that many thoughts. As many thoughts, there are that many ways. And I believe that's what is diplomacy. But I should hear you. You hear me. And usme se kuch to nikal aayega. main bola tha questions puchna zaruri hai. Bachcho se bhi puchha jaye. Hamare ko har ghar mein why do you have so much of problems? You know, because parents don't want to listen to children. Listen, I'm saying share na. Every activity, whichever is possible to share, share with children. They will become a part of it. So today, therefore, we have participatory training. You know? Teaching is participatory. So that is how diplomacy comes across. How do we talk? So therefore, interact. I call it IOC. Interact. We need to constantly have communications. And each communication, we have to know whom am I talking to. Then observe that when I'm talking, what is the reaction? I call it air, action, interaction, and reaction. We must have, when I'm talking, the other person who is listening to me is going to react. So they may not say anything, but the facial gestures or the body language does reflect. And I need to circulate. Circulate the more I circulate with people. I need not even speak. I can keep my ears and eyes open. When I circulate, I learn a lot. There are a lot of inputs coming inside this. Okay, I, the last sentence I believe in is intelligence is very, very important, but it needs to be backed by common sense. And that is the core line underlining of uh, projection and reality. We must have common sense enough as to then intelligently package the whole thing. This is what is uh, my understanding of uh, projection and reality. With this, I end my talk. Thank you so much, CIR management, uh, Dr. Gopinath, and the, all the committee members for inviting me. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Dr. Toshar Guha. It's very well said about uh, democratically autocratic. That is the required uh, principle uh, uh, which is to be used for the principles and particularly for the teachers also. Uh, the uh, participants, in case if you would like to ask any questions to sir, please ask now. You can just raise your hand so that we can unmute yourself and you can ask him directly. Pramod sir, want to ask some questions. Pramod sir, please. Yes, yes. Pramod sir, evening, please. Sir. Good evening, sir. Uh, Dr. Guha, the democracy and autocracy. Now, democratic autocrat, it's somewhat not digesting because both have the different different characteristics. And synchronizing the democratic view with the autocratic view, we both both thought processes are entirely different. Yeah, we can say that thing. Saying is very easy, but synchronizing that thing, I think uh, like uh, it is not digesting. So if you can. Focus on more on that. How yes, to synchronize yes, that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Synergy yes, sir. to energy, we can do that thing. But from yeah, energy yeah, to yeah, synergy, see, going, it, it is uh, like it, that. It, it has to be practiced. Democracy. See, when we say democracy and autocracy, that pulls apart. Yes. The yeah. two different ends. But when we bring them together, here democracy is. I have to listen to everybody. 
but naturally not during emergency. If there is a crisis, then if I keep on listening to everybody, then it is not going to be possible. As the head, say as a principal of a school, there are certain things, you know, the vision of the principal will be far more wider than of any teacher or any student. The principal will have to take into consideration the not only the students and the parents, but the teachers and the supporting staff, the office staff, the management, the board member, and the government. So multiple. So their vision is far more bigger. So therefore, even if when I listen to the others, I take only that part of theirs, but I cannot give away this because I have also to understand which whatever I'm going to decide, I have, I'm answerable to number of other areas also. So there comes the autocracy, which the others will not understand. See, yeah. as the chairman of my group, we, we are global organization. Chairman of my group, I have 200 faculty members who are working. Now I have, there are certain set rules, but I have to deviate also at times, but therefore I take, and mine is, mind you, as a social organization primarily. So I have, and in social organization, it is very difficult to sustain everybody together. And I'm very proud, mine is 58 year old organization, till date nobody has ever left. That's what I take a lot of pride in. But for that, I had to work doubly hard. Not only me, my second and third line had to work mm -hmm. tremendously at keeping everybody together. So we spend a lot of time interacting, getting feedback, taking their opinions. It's not that everything what they're saying can be implemented, cannot be. So we tell them that this much is not possible to implement. Uh, or they can be implemented later on. It cannot be done at this particular moment. And therefore, and the decision has to go from me. Yeah. Because if you allow everybody to come and take a decision, decision will never happen. No executive can ever function unless and until uh, it is the authority will have to speak. Yeah, but I think I think that it's uh, deciding the best with uh, with the available resources or available thought process, customizing yes. it as per the need and requirement yes, and the situation. Yes, yes so that is that is somewhat closer to the distributed community thought process. But yes. I think calling it autocracy is something because it is not sir, that sir, person will be more democratic courts, rather than courts. Courts are pun intended. Okay, yeah. when you say democratically autocracy, this is pun intended. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Sir, there is one question from Mr. Hanuman Deshmukh. How do you see arts in the form of dance to understand human nature of oneself and others also? Okay. Uh, you know, it's, this is very uh, interesting because what happens is usually when, uh, you know, I started learning dance from the age of two and a half. So usually when even male boys are dancing, Somehow our way of training has been, they become effeminate. Okay. And that by the time I was about 12 and 13, I didn't like it. I said, why a man dancing should become effeminate? Okay. But that is because the way we are taught. So I started in, I am, you have met me several, I am not at all feminine. Or none of my male dancers are at all feminine. So it is the way we are teaching them. That is right. Now, as for understanding a person, only through dance alone you cannot, because that is also a projection. Because whatever is they say, if it's a classical dance, the way the adas have been taught, the way the steps have been taught, or the mudras, hasta mudras, or the abhinaya has been taught. So that is what they're going to portray. So that does not give at all as to what is the human being is. Because whenever we are dancing, in classical or even in folk, we are portraying a character, we are portraying certain moods, and that is not necessarily the dancers, right? So it will you'll never be able to come down to that. If though dancer showed this, therefore he or she must be like this. That is not because we are on stage, we are performing artists, we are acting. Dance may be, we do not use our acting, but Abhinaya is a singularly most important factor in dance be it all classical or folk or anywhere. Raise sir, uh, Reema Banka, ma'am, has raised her hand. Uh, can we unmute her? Reema Banka. 
Madam Rima Banka, you can. Madam, you can unmute. We have done from our side. You please. Yeah, yeah. Now it is fine. Please on your video if possible. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, by mistake, I raised my hand. Question. I'm sorry. It was by mistake. I'm sorry. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. In case any other any other participant. Bala, principal UPS. Uh, one more hand is there. Bala, principal UPS. Please unmute yourself and ask. Our, uh, uh, Good evening, sir. Is also there. Pramod, sir, uh, sir, you can also. Yeah, ask yeah. Can, can you hear me, sir? Um, Bala, yeah, can you yeah. hear me? Yeah, I can yes, hear yes. you, but I think there are two, three people speaking. Sir, I'm Bala, sir, and uh, can you so, throw some yeah, light and uh, steam dynamics, sir? One second. Sir, you uh, I think there's a lot of uh, speaking. Sir, sir, please, Bala, sir, please ask the question again once more. Sir, so, uh, can you throw some light on team, uh, team dynamics, sir, uh, once again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, again. Thank you, uh, sir. Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, team dynamics, as I said, it is different from team building. Team dynamics is the spirit, how we work in the team. So naturally, when we have a team, let's take a school. If I, as an example, if I give a school, so who will be the team? It will be the principal, then the teachers. So naturally, there will be a coordinator or a supervisor and all that. And then the teacher or head of departments, also certain schools. Then there'll be one section that will be the office staff. There'll be one section that is called the supporting staff. Okay. So when we have all, so what is it that we have to? We have to empower each group, empower with their own work. That is, they must understand what is their function, start to end. They must understand what is their function, what is expected out of them, and they have to be brief. So today you will find uh, not only in corporate, even in number of schools, I find even class four people are being groomed. And it is a must because most of them do not know what is their function. They emulate the senior and start doing it. So their roles are not defined. It's necessary for the efficiency of the organization that every person knows their definite role, what they're supposed to do, and the extension, extension of the role also. Because otherwise, what happens? They start taking advantages or misuse power. So that needs to be explained. Now, once that is that is called the functional side, that's the team building side. But once, but team dynamics cannot happen if the team building is not firm. Once that is done, this role definition has come in. Then you can designate somebody who does the moderations of all these people. You know, and basic line therefore happens is it is not that if somebody is at fault, you are not supposed to say that you are at fault. But and even stringent action also needs to be taken at times. That is where I said, you know, that democratically autocratic that needs to be done. But at the same time, we need to appreciate and encourage because there are people who are not intentionally doing wrong, but misconception or Concepts are not clear. They were not sure as to what they should do. So gradually, this will come. So in uh, team dynamics, it's the spirit that counts to appreciate. So I always say we need to be a little friendly with our people. For instance, get to know each one's background. Who all are there in the family? I know a lot of organization. 14 years they are there working together. They're not even aware if the colleague is married or not married or who are the members of the family. I think that's very significant. I need not know much, but at least I should know certain things about him so that, you know, where is the bonding otherwise? Because, I mean, just we have come here to work and then full stop. No, bonding has to go extend a little bit more. That is called team dynamics, sir. Sir, uh, is it all right, sir? Hello? Yes, sir. Margin, sir. Yeah. Sir, uh, sir, this video is ah, now it's correct. Sir. Yeah. sir, in team dynamics, yeah. whatever the outcomes are there, who holds the responsibility and who holds the authority? Sir, sir you are muted. Sir, I told you that's why that we need to designate somebody. So when team building happens, they designate 
ki so and so usually in team building nowadays in corporates it's the hr department that does hr also has got an extension called lnd that is learning and development but hr ka one section is for training one section is for man management you know so that section that is what is supposed to be taken care of see in larger organization you do not expect the head to do everything it is not yeah. possible so even in a school nowadays when you have more than 100 teachers we cannot expect the principal to start doing every little thing so principal will again designate some people you can make it when i always say you can make a small group of people a leader of that group and sometimes official designation sometimes unofficially designated people also it depends how it is going to work like i have my in my own organization there are a lot of unofficial designations are there because i know that they are very good at talking and they are able to carry the team along with them and if i give them the designation the moment about they are my boss ho gaya so i avoid that it, it is that way it has to be done right sir. so responsibility sir. of course the absolutely head will have to decide who is going to get the responsibility sir there is a question in the chat box from mrs shreeja manon being in a team how can we motivate the ones who are less motivated and align them with others wonderful question <laughs> yeah, i think uh, if i'm not wrong you said that how can you motivate the boss right <laughs> isn't it so let's clear yeah. that is why yeah. what is the yes, question sir. again please question is being in a team how he, whom you want to motivate how, I, uh, how can we motivate the ones who are those less, less motivated, motivated. Uh, and align them with us okay okay coming to that yeah yeah compared when we find there are certain people not uh, not very motivated not like the others are less motivated then the head the leader will have to take certain steps for instance Uh, sir suresh sir if you know in your school yeah. also yeah. The, when i had the principal sessions i said there could be a meeting of uh, cottery then single yes, then group and in yes, mass if you remember that is what is the step that has to be taken they could be uh, taken up you know and not as an official meeting it should not be called into the cabin but by yeah. the by but to but me we should find out about them and therefore we'll find out what is the area why so and so is not motivated as i told you while in my talk it could be for environmental reason it could be somebody's there was in the family somebody was very dominant and this particular person as a child always remains suppressed so even in the profession is unable to speak up now there are usually when there is somebody very dominant at home the the uh, outcome is extreme either that person when he is an adult becomes fiery and starts talking or bossing over other people or becomes extraordinarily subdued so we have to find out what it was and then take away address that issue there are a lot of ways of doing it of course uh, there are all psychological ways of doing it that's what we call it mentoring that 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 has happened it is done give them certain responsibilities and therefore you will i think uh, uh, suresh sir if i am yeah. not yes, wrong sir. you were yeah. one of the team members in this with yeah. how yes, to handle sir. people yes sir there i had ki when there is somebody who is very subdued what all we should do for them now that itself those are separate papers in itself correct you know that will take me another one and a half hour to explain okay so then there are ways how to address this subdued people and once they receive appreciation and encouragement which they have never received then they start gradually opening up and they may falter also in the initial stage so we have to build up their self esteem is zero so you have to create the self esteem sir sir there's another question from See, dr sujatha these Sujarita. are very huge subject yeah yes yeah, sir yes sir yes sir uh, that there, there's another question from dr sujatha chatterjee yeah. can you give some uh, uh, inputs Uh, regarding keeping the spirit high of the teachers during this pandemic which is very much the need of the hour yeah. absolutely ma'am i agree with you this is in fact in uh, the schools that are regularly in touch with me uh, including suresh school i often keep on telling them that the principal must have online meeting with the teachers you know periodically 
and that apart now a lot of schools have kept uh, somebody the vice principal somebody who is monitoring the classes so such people should and it should not be only by the principal alone the big number of what happens is all round appreciation needs to come so uh, you can talk to each of the teachers one to one and different timings and not that you have to do to everybody every month and certain things you note which is highly highly appreciative so that needs to be pointed out to the teacher privately and then on occasions make a public statement when you have uh, met all the teachers online by the by take certain names certain instances rather even if you do not want to take names if you share the instances that particular person will know it is for him or her and everybody will that means it is called public recognition one to one when you have done but it is a must and it should be a continuous process man i cannot and you know actually i say even when physical classes are on even that time it has to be but here it is now all the more because there is no personal contact ever happening and if any parent has appreciated something share that for this particular class in general not to become specific but privately you can of course even share that so this interaction is a must because uh, you know everybody likes to hear good about themselves but naturally it has to be valid okay sir so when you uh, justify yes, the example oh, yeah. sir, last question last question yes, i am taking online teachers training yeah yeah okay so red sir last... ap sharma sir is there he is also okay. an expert in this subject ap sharma okay. sir do you want to ask some question ap sharma sir the i could find deepa ma'am also they are all our sonal great sonal directors ap sharma sir deepa ma'am i think uh, mr pramod rajput is also there he is also a veteran in this field sir may i i yes. could see yeah 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 sir, very good any question good evening sir uh, first of all thank you so much for uh, bringing your expertise and experience and giving us the insight uh, regarding very important topics in the form of 3s 3cs cap and uh, about the intelligence factor uh, uh, that it must be backed up by common sense although it is not very common these days so uh, sir my query is uh, one more thing i would like to thank you for and that is uh, your concept of age age is uh, just a number actually and a person's age uh, as per, means according to what you said a person's age must be calculated by the equation 18 plus experience am i right sir so sweet so sweet so my thank you my query is sir uh, what would be the impact of uh, replacement of an educationist by robots say a, a teacher or a doctor whatsoever will the development of uh, artificial intelligence or e learning kind of things means it will increase the scope of uh, automation and standardization of didactic as well as social processes because you know sir as this is a but natural i mean uh, it is assumed that you cannot teach artistry uh, to machine social sensitivity or or emotional intelligence or empathy etc so what is your uh, view about this uh, i actually pretend to agree with this because there are certain things cannot be uh, taught with whatever you know the artificial intelligence and all those things is not possible they all will have a limitations you know uh, because i am in the uh, you know the international emotional and intelligence committees that so we always discuss to a particular point the artificial intelligence will go but after that the touch is required touch i'm not talking is a physical touch but that touch one to one is is a must we at the end of it because we are human beings at the end we are not robots that comes back come what may see even now when online i enjoyed talking to you and all but i think i would have loved if i could have seen you people now ma'am frankly because when you asked me the question i saw you so i felt very nice but when others asked me the question i could not see everybody so i was as if in a blank state so this is is bound to happen to everyone right yes i i contribute to this that they will have obviously all these such as a tremendously beneficial 
where they were, up to a particular point, then the touch is required. Sir, the last question, which uh, by which we can uh, wind up after the vote of thanks, that is uh, one Shubhangi Pawar, Madam, has asked, Sir, can you suggest any methodology or activity which can make a practice in kids and which helps them in personality development? Okay. Okay. Uh, for the children, you're talking about for the children? Yes, sir. See, specifically uh, on this, I would rather than the children, I would like the, the parents need to keep the children occupied during this, uh, this pandemic period. Now, occupation is uh, not, not that only uh, academics say they cannot get occupied. Too much of TV is also not a right thing to get occupied. So this is the time. It is a little challenge for uh, the parents to get involved with the child. I'll share with you. And now, uh, because of pandemic, my daughter is with me. And my son-in-law is in Kolkata. And uh, my granddaughter is with me. So me, my wife, and my daughter, although me and my daughter have very hectic life, but we are dividing among ourselves, but we are constantly interacting with her in many, many ways. You know, we are chatting, discussing, playing Ludo also. We are also giving her time to see, watch TV. But there is one particular day we have no TV day. She's nine years old. So that interaction will have to be with parents, where we have to see that definite discipline does not go away. So we are involving my granddaughter to small, small household chores also in activities at home. So where it becomes a sense of belonging also. These are what the parents will have to do. Because uh, children, if you give them, they're the first thing they will want to see, watch TV and all other things. So I would rather address it to the parents that how they have to involve the children into everything, even their assignments that they're doing homework. So get, let's get involved with it. Not we do the homework, but the child should do an appreciation. I actually see, like my daughters, I have seen her, you are doing handwriting. Uh, so she, whatever handwriting she does, she'll come to show. Dadu, can you see this? I actually, I don't say good, good, but I actually read through. Then she feels it is important. If I just look at it and say, very nice, very nice. After two days, she will know that Dadu is not interested. Children learn all this. So we actually take the interest. Honestly, honestly speaking, I don't like to read the whole thing, but I still do. Uh, okay. Sir, thank you, sir. Now, so Jason, sir, we'll go, go for yeah, water. Yeah. Yes, sir, proceed, proceed, sir. So I request... Uh, Suresh, sir. Suresh, sir, ah, can I... Uh, 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 I was okay, not okay. able to switch on okay, my sorry. audio. Okay, go uh, ahead, ma'am. And ahead, I, ma I, 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 I'm so happy to listen to you. Uh, for me, the takeaway was as um, the leadership dynamics, what you talked about, and uh, team dynamics, which uh, usually people miss out when they have as leaders. So it was a wonderful lot many takes away from your uh, this topic, sir. Yes. Thank you Thank so you. much. Um, and it was wonderful that, uh, you know, on this day, uh, when we are locked down, this type of insights have will be helping us to build better. Thank you so much, Suresh, Thank sir, you. Thank you. and everyone. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Now I request uh, Mr. Bhavik Parekh, principal from Gujarat and uh, zonal director of CEIR to propose vote of thanks. Bhavik, sir. Yeah. Good evening, everyone. Bande Guru to all. Bande Guru. Uh, truly speaking, an artist who mesmerized us with his words of wisdom, an innovative psychologist who changed our vision, our perception towards reality and projection of so many things in life, Definitely, there are a lot of takeaways from today's webinar and much more to come. Let us be democratically autocratic. Education is spirit for living for teachers in the pandemic. Drawing a line between the professional and personal life. And these three things are definitely, we all will keep in mind existing living and reality living. What a fantastic examples you have given. Truth has to be living, not existing. The three S of life, self-confidence, sustainability, self-reliance of my thought and feeling. And definitely asking a question is my 
बर्थ राइट इज अ बर्थ राइट ऑफ इच एंड एवरी वन इफ यू वॉन्ट टू नो इफ यू वॉन्ट टू एक्सप्लोर एंड इफ यू वॉन्ट टू नो टू मेनी थिंग्स इन लाइफ एंड देन टारगेट एंड फोकस टाइम मैनेजमेंट एंड टीम डायनामिक्स explaining about the family and the relationships that is communication academics and presentation and then the equality in education equal opportunity to all and equality in education a wonderful session dr tushar guha sir uh, i also thank mr girish dalvi for introducing sir at the right time i also thank the support team the technical team and the founder of ceir dr shreesan gopinath for giving us such a wonderful session on innovative topics blended learning and topics which are the need of nr thank you very much sir i also thank veda handwriting lab for his unstinting support to cir act of handwriting itself can reduce stress it helps improve focus attention in classroom it increases creativity in learning increases memory and even improvises the mood which was told by sir that emotional freedom therapy when students when even we pen down the negative thoughts it gets eliminated from the body which is being proved handwriting also improves the cognitive benefits both in and out of the classroom wherever we are i also thank the members the board of directors zonal directors premium members principals teachers who have attended this session now there are some announcement e certificates will be uploaded in our website by first week of may and it is available for those who have attended at least two of the april webinars and fill the feedback form and on payment of rupees 100 our next week program that is on 30th april the last session of nep pedagogy series will part 4 at 5 pm for the middle sections that is for grade 6 to 8 i request each and every one to register for the same i also request schools to visit our veda handwriting kit dot campus connect and try the veda handwriting kit definitely it will be very helpful in schools i thank each and every one associated with the program with the webinar over to you dr srishan sir yeah uh, thank you i think suresh sir the tender credit thank should you. go to mr no, no. uh, our uh, sonal director suresh sir no no sir, it's all right. team effort <laughs> it's all team effort and i but, uh, fighting such a great mind. personality is only to happen through you so uh, our great <laughs> appreciation and gratitude to dr suresh sir no, on my personal behalf i thank uh, dr tushar guha and mr girish sir delvi and you know on the girish delvi are very special thanks to you because see last moment uh, i had to search the <laughs> search uh, search profile and immediately sir sir always we used to work in our open forum for principals we used to work like that anything happens at any moment of time and particularly during this type of uh, webinar and all we are sitting at different places so still the coordination is coming and uh, guha sir thank you very much sir and a lot of takeaways every time as every, any time see we, we used to and i used to attend uh, each and every session of dr dushar guha because every session gives different takeaways and thanks to all all our team members for one i mean each and every uh, support and help which you have rendered and because of the team effort only our uh, programs are becoming a great success and those who are there and who have not downloaded the ceir app please download it the next time may onwards we will be doing all the programs through the app through the app you can watch the program you can download the certificates you can uh, watch uh, the videos of earlier programs oh, many so many videos have been uploaded in it so everything can be done from this and just one and you can, will get each and every notification which we are sending it so thank you thank you shreesan sir thank you deepa ma'am thank you vijay ma'am i i just want to say sir. a word please, please, uh, for uh, dr suresh nair sir guha sir your uh, dr your suresh nair sir is very very directly. close to me sir, guha sir no sound is coming whatever he tells me i have to do to sir sir no sound is coming no 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 it is clear we are getting the sir please unmute yourself sir why but mine is no no sir, yeah, you are you able to hear me now also guha sir please proceed sir no issues no no i wanted to uh, just say a word about uh, dr uh, suresh nair 
is very very close to me we are associated for a long long number of years and he is uh, one of the main functionary of uh, open forum for principles you know actually and Hello. whatever if suresh sir ever tells me to do anything there is no sir, question sir, of that your sound is no. not at all coming but uh, his sound is not there coming is coming no but it is on no it is on. suresh sir it is uh, clear maybe there is a problem suresh sir, suresh sir you hold no, on no, sir, i think there is some problem suresh, sir, with sir. Him. sir it is coming suresh sir is coming no, no, <laughs> okay no, it is coming okay okay, okay. <laughs> no is some problem with my uh, yeah yeah you are using two devices <laughs> i think okay okay so we'll wind up sir now yeah, yeah. Is, you are uh, sir, sir, not sir, sir, please proceed tushar sir want to say something more please proceed tushar sir you last last no, uh, some inputs to us tushar sir what is happening i cannot talk tushar sir we can Pass hear you. you yes yes sir you can hear me yes, oh, sir. yes sir there is something yes, wrong sir. here The yeah, two, yes, two last two lines Second from John. your side, sir. The last two, last two, last two golden words from your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I wanted to uh, particularly thank uh, Dr. Gopinath uh, because uh, I I have heard about CIR uh, from uh, Suresh sir a lot of uh, times. It was wonderful uh, thought, wonderful philosophy, and. Uh, because uh, i think we sail on similar boats so we understand and i think we'll appreciate each other more and it's amazing sir it has uh, i really felt very nice talking because you know uh, although it's online and i'm unable to see but somehow you get the vibe you get the vibe that it is coming in uh, so that is what i wanted to personally uh, uh, thank uh, dr gopinath also Thank you, thank you, sir. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. I'm very happy. I am able to see Mr. Pradmod Rajput. So many of our sonal directors. I think uh, very, very happy. And and one, one, uh, you know, chat. I want to read. You know, it's very nice. First time I'm getting. You know, I mean, it's very rare. This thing, like, um, uh, you know, something, something very, very, very informative uh, chat. Let me read it. it says like you know i mean and that uh, i couldn't find it it says like you know this session made my evening fruitful <laughs> you know that, that is that was i forgot i couldn't find out uh, that was sort of the you know the great inspirational uh, words uh, that i i couldn't uh, find out now anyway once again uh, thank you very much all the participants uh, especially our chief guest uh, tushar sir uh, dr tushar guha and uh, his associate mr girish all uh, our sonal directors board of directors uh, you know happy weekend uh, one day guru one day guru one day guru sir thank you thank you thank you thank you all